I'm Bernina expert Amanda Murphy and in this video I'll show you how to quilt the second diamond from our diamonds quilt along. You can find PDF instructions on Bernina's blog wealso.com. Each of the diamonds features a different design within a similar framework. So there's a separate video that you can access on We Also that shows you how to quilt the framework. I did that with my every angle ruler. Diamond number two has the simplest center design. You simply use a circle ruler to connect the diamond's corners. I quilted ribbon candy in the channel of this block. I used my every circle six inch ruler to connect the corners. So you can see here, I'm lining up the ruler so that its edge is a quarter inch away from the point I'm trying to hit. And I don't try to quilt too far before I reposition my hands, particularly on a sit down machine. You need to make sure that you always have control of the fabric. With larger quilts, this might mean that you're going a little slower because you're taking the time to smooth out your quilt top as you go. But in the end, this saves you time because you don't have to rip. So I'm just patient. I make sure that I have both hands on the ruler and both hands on the fabric at all times. If I need to adjust my ruler, I stop and adjust my ruler. Now, at this point, I have the four curves done and I'm going to fill this area with stippling. You could fill it with paisleys, you could fill it with pebbles, whatever you feel like, whatever your favorite free motion motif is. The next step is to quilt the channel. So I've gone ahead and changed to my 73 foot and I'm using the optional laser light that is available for the Bernina Q series to help me see where my needle is going to penetrate the fabric. And as I said before, I quilted ribbon candy in this border. And I'm using the Bernina gripper rings as well. I love the gripper rings because it's like having a dozen fingers to control your quilt top, extra fingers. So I go up and down. And every time I go up and down, I'm thinking of going around a coin a penny, a nickel, a quarter. It depends on the size of my ribbon candy, but I think about going around the circle at the top and the bottom. You can see my laser light is in the automatic mode, which means it's on when I stop and it's off when I'm quilting. And a lot of times I use it like that for free motion or ruler work. The 73 foot you see here is great for quilting on a domestic or on a Q series. It allows you the ability to lower and raise the foot just by turning the gold dial. So I'm coming up to a corner and I'm gonna begin thinking about it at this point. Whatever design I execute on one side of that line, I want to do a mirror image of that design on the other. This is diagrammed really well in the PDF. So I'm basically trying to do a mirror image as I begin quilting the other direction. It doesn't have to be perfect, your eye won't see it. When we're quilting, we're dealing with texture instead of line. So I'm smoothing out my fabric again, and then I keep on going. I find one of the most common mistakes people make when they're trying to practice ribbon candy is that they I think it's curvier than it really is. So what a ribbon candy really is comprised of is a semicircle and then a diagonal line. If you think about that semicircle and then you make a slight diagonal line up and then a semicircle, slight diagonal down, don't make it too curvy. I also am thinking about how far down or up I want the ribbon candy to extend. And I typically watch the edge of my foot for this. So I don't make the ribbon candy intersect the channel lines. Instead, I let the edge of my foot just barely touch the edges of the channel. That prevents me from crossing into the channel, which can look messy. And I'm doing another corner. It doesn't matter if this corner is a little different than the first one. It will all look fine because again, you're creating a texture. 
And if you don't feel comfortable doing ribbon candy, you could do loops, you could do fish bones. There's many other designs that you could do within this channel that would look great. So once you fill the channel, that's it. You've completed Diamond Design 2. Join us on We All Sew to learn how to quilt the other diamonds. And next month, we'll feature some bonus projects you can make with the leftover fabric from this quilt top. Hope to see you there.